This video is sponsored by Manscaped. More info at the end of the video. Multiplayer has taken over so much of the general gaming space that almost all big budget single player games have to have some sort of multiplayer mode in them. Traditionally, single player only franchises like Dying Light, Doom, and Metal Gear Solid have found success with their smaller scale player versus player modes that offer what is akin to an end game experience to their single player story. Some single player series have taken the multiplayer plunge completely and found tremendous success like in the case of Grand Theft Auto. However, for every success story, there are plenty of examples of games not quite making the cut. The game we are discussing today, Umbrella Core, is one of them. Now nearly forgotten, the multiplayer entry into the critically acclaimed Resident Evil franchise never quite made it into the mainstream. So what happened, and why was it dead on arrival? This is Umbrella Core. Despite Resident Evil being missing from the title, Umbrella Core is still a canonical entry into the famous, primarily single player, franchise. Resident Evil is a Japanese survival horror series made by Capcom. Most of the earlier games in the series follow a group of characters who battle against the Umbrella Corporation, a pharmaceutical company specializing in researching and developing bioorganic weapons and who created the T-Virus, a virus that ended up transforming humans into zombies and mutating animals and plants into monsters. The series' earlier games were incredibly successful, with Resident Evil 1, 2, and 4 being the recipients of multiple Game of the Year awards and places on lists of the best video games ever. The series underwent a gameplay reboot with its newest entries, Biohazard and Village, and those have had their own commercial success and impact, pushing the survival horror genre to new heights. The Resident Evil IP has since transcended just video games and has had novels, TV shows, comics, an infamous movie series, and even stage plays. Clearly, it's a strong brand that can work in many different mediums. One of those mediums seems probably more obvious than taking Resident Evil to Broadway. <laughs> multiplayer games. Even leading up to Umbrella Core, the series has had its fair share of multiplayer game modes, starting with Resident Evil Outbreak, a co-op game that followed the standard survival horror formula that the mainline games pioneered. Following this, more experiments with co-op gameplay existed in Resident Evil 5, which was able to have its full story mode played entirely with a partner. Even though the game revealed that co-op play was a bit of a detriment to the survival horror atmosphere, there was still room for a more traditional take on multiplayer. Enter Operation Raccoon City, the next notable multiplayer focused entry in the series. Unfortunately, despite having a cult following, Operation Raccoon City suffered from complaints of poor design and the action-oriented gameplay steering a bit too far from what the series was known for, being scary. But rather than shy away from the criticisms, Capcom decided instead to lean in completely, refining this multiplayer formula with Umbrella Core. Revealed in 2015 and later released in 2016, Umbrella Core was developed at Capcom's headquarters in Osaka and the team aimed to make a fast-paced multiplayer experience similar to what was being offered on the current esports market. While this was a departure from what the Resident Evil series was known for, they had made multiplayer games before, so the prospect wasn't completely out of the question. Matches in Umbrella Core are 3v3 on small maps, forcing players to fight each other fairly frequently. The game sports a hybrid third-person and first-person setup, with the camera being really zoomed in over the character's shoulder, and only zooming out when you take cover at a corner. For the most part, it feels like a game that would work well as a first-person shooter, and in fact the camera does go to first-person when you aim down your sights. This was likely done because of the intentional claustrophobic design of the maps and tight corridors, a technique used to great effect in other Resident Evil games, but unusual in competitive shooters. Another familiar element present on all maps are zombies. But instead of them mindlessly hunting you down and trying to eat your brains at all times, thanks to the zombie jammers present on all players, the hordes never attack directly unless a player's zombie jammer is shot off. Oh, Does this have anything to do with Resident Evil? They're zombies! This was one of the few fresh ideas that the game brought to the table, as zombies could be used as shields or weaponized against opposing players. While standard team deathmatch, point defense, and collect briefcases modes were all present, the most innovative game mode in Umbrella Core was a type of kill confirmed mode that used the zombies in a very interesting way. When killed, 
each zombie would drop a vial that you needed to pick up. Pick up more vials than your opponents, and you win the game. And zombies would go down easy enough. Fire a couple bullets, and there's a vial ripe for the taking. But shooting your gun would alert the enemies to your location, who could then come and kill you to take the vial for themselves, or just leave you at a disadvantage being a man or two down. This was the only mode that used the zombie fodder on the map beyond just combat. The game also had a single player mode, where you would complete objectives by yourself through the multiplayer maps, with zombies being hostile from the get-go. Unfortunately, this mode wasn't reviewed very favorably, as the zombies dropped too many healing items for the atmosphere to be tense at all. The gist of the game's story was that several competing organizations are fighting for the leftover research information from the Umbrella Corporation, who disbanded 10 years prior in the story. This places the game three years after the events of Resident Evil 6. All in all, the whole story was very inconsequential to the overarching series, but it provided the opportunity to have the maps be in famous Resident Evil locations spanning the entire series, playing up the nostalgia factor. There were a good amount of cosmetic options, and a noticeable lack of traditional microtransactions, which for 2015 was pretty good. While on paper the game seemed moderately promising, it wasn't quite clear what kind of audience the game was being marketed to. Multiplayer shooter fans had plenty of high budget options. Resident Evil fans weren't exactly looking for a traditional multiplayer title and had a new mainline series game, Biohazard, releasing the following year. Ultimately, even with plenty of Resident Evil fan service, it was all slapped on a bland third person shooter package. The original release date for Umbrella Core was May 2016, but it got delayed to June of the same year. While there could have been any number of factors that led to the delay, the most likely one is that they didn't want to compete with the release of Overwatch. Additionally, the game didn't have the Resident Evil name in the title, despite having trademarked the name Resident Evil Umbrella Core the previous year in Asia. So unless you already know of the series, it's unlikely that you would have realized Umbrella Core was a Resident Evil game. Unfortunately, the delay would not prove fruitful as Umbrella Core came out on the same date as Mighty No. 9 one of the most infamous Kickstarter hype slash disappointing release stories of the era. Almost all the press was busy covering that story, and Umbrella Corps got virtually no room on any major news outlets. Even though it was moderately priced at $30 on release, it's hard to justify paying for a game that just didn't look all that promising. Umbrella Corps launched with a peak of 50 players on average on Steam, with an all-time peak of 450 players in its first year. Negative reviews on launch did nothing to help the player numbers grow. A patch in August would enable matches to start as a 2v2 instead of a 3v3 due to the small player counts, and a free-to-play weekend was held, but ultimately, it failed to gain any traction. But Umbrella Corps wasn't as big of a failure as you might think. After all, the games that crash and burn hard are the games that are hyped up the games with lots of money behind them that end up failing spectacularly. Umbrella Corps couldn't fail spectacularly because there really weren't any expectations. While Capcom clearly did want a slice of the big esports pie, throwing their beloved Resident Evil brand into the ring was a paltry attempt at doing so. Grenade, Alpha falling back, not in great condition, and Alpha's down, that's gonna hurt. Sure, they came out with a decent but unexciting small scale 3v3 experience, but no one was losing their minds in anticipation for Umbrella Corps. Today, the game is still available to purchase and play, with some diehard Resident Evil fans still regarding it as a neat, short experience if you can find a match. The Resident Evil games that came out after Umbrella Corps, Biohazard, the 2 and 3 remakes, and Village were all incredibly successful, so Umbrella Corps did little to tarnish the series' brand and reputation. Sure, Umbrella Corps was a cool novelty, but maybe not all games need a multiplayer mode. And maybe, the idea of shoehorning it in, much like the infected in Resident Evil, should just stay dead. Alright, last circle. Oh man, where is he? What the? Where was he? Hiding in that bush? We've all been there, killed in the last circle by a dirty camper. But what if I told you, this could all have been easily avoided if he'd just trimmed the bush. Introducing the new Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer from Manscaped. Manscaped's fourth generation electric waterproof body trimmer with advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts and nicks in the most sensitive regions of the body, including around the bush. Usable in any weather conditions, the Lawnmower 4.0 features a super smart cordless charger and these little LED lights on the front that let you know how much juice you have left. With 90 minutes of power at full charge, 
you can take this bad boy on the go and not have to worry about running out of power. Plus, it's got this neat little travel lock feature, so you don't have to worry about the razor going off when you're trying to be stealthy. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off and free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use promo code ACTION at checkout. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason, B, Brendan, QB, Foxy, Mauv, Pachanas, Sierra, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, and Marco for being Diamond supporters. Happy New Year, we're glad you're all still here. Check us out on Instagram linked in the description. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.